What are the differences between structural and functional scoliosis? There are different types of scoliosis, and the first type to understand is something called idiopathic scoliosis, which accounts for 80% of all known cases of scoliosis. Idiopathic scoliosis literally means unknown cause. There's no singular cause that's leading to the scoliosis developing, and we believe it's a multifactorial condition, meaning there's many things that can happen during somebody that's developed during development and growth, or even adult stage, that can lead to a scoliosis occurring. In fact, somebody can have more than one factor, and the more these factors that occur at the right time can lead to the curve becoming either a severe or mild scoliosis. The remaining 20% do have known causes, neuromuscular, is one of these cases, congenital, degenerative, and traumatic. Now, neuromuscular scoliosis is when there's an underlying neuromuscular condition that's normally affecting the connective tissue of the body, causing either contractures or laxity, or something that's affecting the spinal cord in a negative way, like a syrinx. This can lead to a causation of scoliosis. Congenital scoliosis actually happens in utero. This is when one of the bones doesn't develop properly and it develops to an abnormal shape, like a hemivertebra, and this will cause a curvature of that area. Degenerative scoliosis is normally what happens or occurs um, in later stage life, 50 plus years of age, most common in females and most common in the lumbar spine. And we believe that it's a result of something happening earlier in life that causes the spine to cause a small shift. This small shift remains uncorrected and it becomes, it, it degenerates faster than the rest of the spine, leading to asymmetrical degeneration, which can lead to scoliosis as they age. And the last type is traumatic, and this is normally a result of a significant trauma causing a sudden onset of scoliosis as a result of something like a car accident or a severe fall. Now, adolescent idiopathic scoliosis is by far the most common type of scoliosis diagnosed, and all these adolescent cases become adults, and they also now lead to adult idiopathic scoliosis, and this can also be termed as adolescent scoliosis now in the adult form. The most common age of diagnosis is between 10 and 18 years of age for adolescent cases. In the adult stage, there is really no specific time of diagnosis, but the number one thing that brings on the diagnosis is pain. And sometimes these patients are aware they have scoliosis, and in many cases they're not because they were never fully diagnosed as a child. The difference between a really a healthy spine and a scoliosis spine is a curve. Scoliosis means that there is an unnatural curvature of the spine, and the spine is being viewed from the front, and that the curvature normally is associated with this twist, this twist that occurs from the front to back, causing this rotational component. And the rotation rotation is normally into the concavity. So if the spine bends this way, it would rotate into the concavity. You hardly ever see spines rotating into the convexity or the outward bend of the curve. And the reason why is because it would stretch the spinal cord even further and cause more kinds of problems and more kinds of problems as a result of the scoliosis. And in fact, if we ever see rotation away from the convexity, we're normally looking for something that's going to be pushing on the curve, like some type of tumor or mass that's causing this curve to occur. It's truly not scoliosis. Scoliosis curvature in order for them to be diagnosed as scoliosis, need to have a Cobb angle of 10 degrees or greater. Now, a measurement of 10 degrees is normally taken on an x-ray, which classifies the severity of the condition. And this involves drawing intersecting lines from the most top tilted vertebra to the lowest most tilted vertebra and drawing an intersection. And the angle between 10 degrees or greater means the person has scoliosis. Severity is related into four specific categories. Mild curvatures are between 10 and 25 degrees. 25 degrees or greater is considered a moderate scoliosis, um, but less than 40. 40 degrees or greater is considered a severe scoliosis. And then 80 plus degrees is what I call very severe. So mild, moderate, severe or very severe. Now, this is categories are only, are only used by the magnitude of the Cobb angle. They're not taking into consideration the effect of the scoliosis could have on the patient. So somebody with a mild scoliosis could have a severe effect. Somebody with a severe scoliosis could have literally no effect. It's causing no uh, physical problems to the person, no pain, no discomfort, no, no functional concerns. So therefore, it's only taking into account the magnitude of the Cobb angle. So when we look at scoliosis, what compromises a structural scoliosis versus a functional scoliosis? Well, structural scoliosis is the most common type, okay? It is when the, the spine truly has a structural deformity associated with the spine. And it means that it's not posturally related 
by itself. And I'll explain what that means. Structural means that there is also a rotational component. If there's no rotation, it's not a structural scoliosis, it's only postural, or it's something else causing the scoliosis to occur. There's almost always a rotational component. And what we see is when the person changes their position, that the curvature doesn't go away. It may reduce, but it doesn't go completely away or it doesn't bend in, opposite, in the opposite direction. Meaning a person with a straight spine and they bend like this and they bend like this and we'll see relatively symmetrical bending where a patient with a structural scoliosis, they have a curve like this and they bend this way and the curve will increase, but they bend this way and the curve will just decrease, but it still bends in this direction. That means there, it's a structural component. It's not just postural, where a person with a uh, functional scoliosis or a postural scoliosis, they'll bend and the curve will go completely away. Okay, so structural means that the structure of the spine is being affected in a way that it's altering normal motion in biomechanics and it can't resolve itself. So a person couldn't stand straight if they wanted to because it won't co completely go away. Now, normally as curves become bigger, they're more likely to become structural. Now, the question is, can a functional scoliosis become a structural scoliosis? The answer is yes. We know that most curves start off in a functional component when they're small and they first uh, start to occur, especially in adolescent cases. They probably start off a few degrees and they're probably completely functional, meaning when the patient bends, they completely, they completely, they, they completely go away. However, these functional scoliosis cases, as they sit there, they become more structural. Functional scoliosis means there's less rotational component involved especially in the beginning. There's an unnatural curvature of the spine, but position can com com completely straighten the spine or, uh, or bend it completely in the opposite direction. Now, something interesting is when I was in a chiropractic college, I was going to chiropractic college in Atlanta, and uh, our college used to work with uh, the Atlanta Braves at that time, and they we used to see all the pitchers, and the pitchers are constantly throwing it with their one hand. They would develop a functional scoliosis in their in their middle part of their spine because the constant repetitive movement. It was relatively small, but we saw as as these. Uh, pictures that went longer in their career, these functional scoliosis could became structural. They actually became structural, but they still were, were maintained a relatively small magnitude. They didn't become 50, 60, 70 degree curves. Like there were maybe were like a 10 degree curve that maybe progressed to like 12, 15 degrees. They still stayed relatively small, but as these uh, patients bent, the curves wouldn't, wouldn't fully resolve like they did earlier in their career. So structure, functional curves can become structural. Structural cases are typically more complex to treat because once you alter normal range of motion, normal therapy doesn't work the same because the idea with normal therapy or normal rehabilitation, when you're dealing with something that has a just a, a functional component, you, you, strength and muscle work and range of motion exercises work because there's still normal motion. Meaning if I want to rehab my elbow, and my elbow can still move like this. Well, I have a good, I have a good way of exercising and rehabilitating it because I have normal motion. However, structural scoliosis, since the motion is altered structurally, and I can't move my elbow, so I only can move my elbow like this. Well, it's much more, it's much more difficult to rehabilitate a joint or an alignment if you can't move it properly. So, structural scoliosis it, it requires more, uh, more complex treatment program because of this, of, of this range of motion. And in addition to the rotational component that's directly involved, this this is what changes really what how we're dealing with structural versus functional scoliosis. Um, but however, when the condition is functional, it's definitely a more simpler process. So when we look at treatment options between structural versus functional, both things can be treated, and both of them are treated using similar approaches. The main difference is going to be the intensity of the treatment, where functional uh, scoliosis cases can be treated using, you know, scoliosis-specific chiropractic care, in-office therapy, you know, customized pre prescribed exercises. In many cases, we would not be using corrective bracing in these stages because we can use the the, the body moves easily out of the out of the out of the position, so all these things can be used, but they're still very scoliosis specific. Where a structural scoliosis, we'll be using the same things, the only difference is we'll probably be adding corrective bracing and the intensity of the therapy will be more intense because we're trying to go through 
what the body can't do on its own, meaning it can't achieve this normal motion. And, it, and because of this lack of normal function or normal motion, the structural cases need more intense treatment. So the good news is, regardless of the type of scoliosis you have, whether it be structural or functional, both things can be treated, and both things can be treated effectively. The longer you let a functional scoliosis sit there, the more likely it is to become structural, the more likely it's gonna need more excessive treatment or more intense treatment, and the harder it is going to be reduced. So functional treatments, normally we can just do some, like I mentioned, the basic versions of, of our care, and this requires some, some lifestyle guidance and addressing posture issues or some asymmetrical exercises or things that you're doing that are leading to this uh, functional scoliosis to develop, but the results are very, very high. I mean, there's a good chance for a good prognosis and good improvement. But once it becomes structural, we can still improve it, but getting full resolution of the problem is less likely because it's become structural at this, po at this point. So we recommend if you, either one you have, the smaller that you treat it, the better results that you're gonna get over your time. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.